Hey guys, welcome back. It is the last day of February and I realized uh, just a couple days ago that I've pretty much neglected to check in on all my seedlings in the trays. Uh, I've given them water a few times and, and all that and they're all still alive but it's uh, it's time to get them into red solo cups today. So that's what we're doing. I just wanted to share that with you. You may have seen one of my earlier videos where I kind of go over our layout and the process, but there weren't any plants in there because it was the, the middle of winter. It was still too early um, to start all that. But um, today we're, we're creeping up on spring and so we're uh, getting ready for that. And we've got some red kale and Napa cabbage is really all that's going to go into red solo cups today uh, i also had a flat of a bunch of different types of onions and shallots and stuff and i just took those outside because i don't plan on putting those into into cups it's going to take up a lot of room so i'm kind of saving resources those are ult ultimately going into buckets and uh, little onions are pretty tough so we're gonna they're outside kind of hardening off for the next few days and when I get around to it, they'll go into uh, into their buckets. But anyway, um, these are still going to be inside for a few more weeks. Our our last frost date is April 1st is what it's projected for this year. And so they can go out sooner than the last frost date because they're pretty hardy plants. Um, so they'll probably stay inside for another two weeks, three weeks, just depending on how busy we are with the rest of life. And uh, then we'll get them out into the garden. And we've got some cool stuff going on with the garden. We're going to put worm castings and uh, compost and all that stuff out there and top it off with uh, some fresh soil this year as well. But so basically the process is we're going to go from the tray into a cup. And you can see these cups have been used over and over again. I think some of these probably came with us when we moved. Um, and the cups, they have holes drilled in the bottom just so they can get a little bit of uh, drainage and then also they're going to sit in these uh, these Tupperware containers and uh, we'll fill this up with water and that will let them kind of do their hydroponic thing and the water will wick up through the soil and it works really well and from there they're going to sit underneath of these cheapo LED lights uh, until we're ready to basically let them go outside for a few days and harden off kind of in the partial shade and uh, then after that they'll go into the garden so I'll uh, I'm gonna put the camera set that up real quick just so you can kind of see what exactly we're doing and um, we'll get back here in just a second all right so check it out I'm in a nice comfortable chair I've got my bag of uh, vegetable and garden soil right here got all my empty cups ready to go I counted them out for how many I need for uh, each plant that I'm doing, and they're all marks that say kale, and uh, basically I'm ready to go. So the first thing is you take your cup that has the couple holes drilled in it, and fill it up about halfway or so. And really what determines the level of soil, how, how high or low you go with it, is how tall or leggy um, your seedlings are, your little plants that are going into these cups, okay? So when we remove the plant from the tray, grab it by the leaves. It can repair leaves easily, but if you damage the bottom stem and uh, it's sort of circu circulatory, vascular system, whatever you want to call it, um, it's going to be stunted and have a, a it's not going to basically develop uh, at that point. You're going to have issues. So we don't want to damage that. So just grab some leaves, pull it out of the tray like so, and we're going to just measure it like that okay i want that soil level to come up um, to the bottom of the kind of the lowest leaves there now there's two plants here i'm going to go ahead and nix one of them going with the tallest kind of straightest looking strong plant that is uh there available and i figure out where i want it and that's pretty good so i put the soil halfway it's sitting right there like so and then we'll just basically get the rest of our soil and top it off with the soil that goes into these cups I, I use just commercial stuff basically because it's easier I've tried using compost out of the compost bin before and it really didn't work it, it resulted in some pretty stubby 
uh, stunted plants and I'm not going to do that anymore. So that we start them off with some seed starter in the trays, but once we get to this next intermediate step, it's kind of like they're going to middle school. So we go ahead and introduce uh, some soil that's a lot closer to what they'd be experiencing in the garden, but it's not nearly as rich because we just don't want to overwhelm them, if that makes sense. But um, and you can see from the level there, that's what we did. So we took a plant that was pretty long and stringy, and you can see how far down it sits in there, okay? And um, this is a good step also, like if let's say the, the cold lasts a little longer than you were expecting or your plans kind of get messed up, you have a lot more control um, in this stage with the cups and they can stay in there for a pretty good while. Um, it's also nice when it's time to harden these off outside, you can just pick the whole container up and, and take it out and you can move them around very easily. Now the thing to watch out for is don't leave them out uh, when it's raining because they'll fill up with water and then they can kind of bob over and everything too. And also these are all basically just soil and air in the cups right now. So before you fill the, uh, the tote with water, spray these down and get them nice and soaking wet or else what happens is as the water fills up, these all come up and they, they tip over like the Titanic. And I've had that happen once or twice um, and it's very self critiquing. So anyway, um, but it's, it's pretty simple stuff. And at this point, we're, we're just in standby mode for whenever they're ready to go out to the garden. But when they do go out there, they're gonna have a nice established uh, kind of root bowl or root bulb, I should say. And uh, they're gonna have a really good strong stem and, and be just more prepared for the elements and everything else. So I highly recommend taking the time to incorporate this step in between of uh, the seed trays and the garden. Now, with that being said, we've got over 500 square feet of raised beds. We've got a whole lot of garden and this is all, <laughs> this is the only thing that we started in seed trays that's going out there and it's our Napa cabbage and our uh, purple or red kale. So we're gonna direct sow everything else, um, but we're not to that point yet. Stuff that you direct sow is, you're gonna need to be uh, a little bit closer to warmer temps and everything because it has to be warm uh, outside for that to, to germinate, at least depending on, on what the variety of plant is that you're growing. So we've got a few more weeks before we get into that, but we'll pretty much be planting these and direct sowing stuff at the same time. So anyway, but uh, yeah, hope that's helpful and make sure you, you like, follow and share and good luck, happy gardening. Hopefully we all have a real good successful spring and uh, looking forward to showing you our garden as it gets going uh, in warmer temps. So we'll see you next time. Thanks, bye.